And without further ado, I'm going to have Kelly Littledink, because I can't pronounce her last name, come up. Thank you, guys. All right. Um, so I work at a tech company called Bendy Works here in Madison. So I'm a designer. And I've had a boatload of jobs, and so I'm just going to drop some life lesson knowledge bombs on you tonight. Um, hopefully, it'll be coherent. Uh, let's see if this works out. Negative. Um, so, let's. Oh, yeah, turn it on. <laughs> yeah. Do I need a mic? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah? Pretty good. Use a mic. Use a mic? Okay. <laughs> I feel tethered. Um, so like everybody else previously before me, let's talk about how I grew up, all right? I was born with a wrench in my hand. Uh, my family was not the normal family at all. Um, my mom and my dad were both carpenters, so they built their everything that they own. Uh, we built two houses in my lifetime at their house. So, you know, we, we grew up with paintbrushes, saws, hammers, drills in our hand, and yes, that's me. Um, I always had a short, short haircut, um, like my mom, uh, sweatpants all the time. My mom got a cement mixer when, uh, when Mother's Day came around, like that was a cool thing to own. I know, right? This is how everybody else grew up, right? Um, so I learned right away that building things in your hands was like a really cool thing to do. And that's all I knew. Like, so. Having a bunch of jobs that that didn't do that, it was weird for me. So we'll go into, it. like I said, jobs. I had a bunch. I had over 15 jobs. Now that sounds like a lot, and it is. Um, and I've, I've been to many different places, and it's not like I couldn't hold a job. It was just that I couldn't sit still. Um, so let's talk about craftsmanship. You have to start somewhere, right? Um, you all had one job, yeah? Yeah, all right. Um, so I worked for my parents' company. Uh, they did signs, commercial signs. My dad hand carved signs. My mom paints them. So when you started a company, you get to do all the fun jobs, like cut lawn, um, sweep, uh, clean things. So that's how I first started, um, you know, working with your hands. So eventually you work your way up. You get a good foundation, so you start learning how to carve. So you get to do what dad does. You know, you start painting. And you start making these signs that, you know, take two weeks to make. You know, it's not instant sign. You don't come in and leave with a sign in your hand. You know, this stuff takes time. So craftsmanship became really important in my family. Not only, you know, building a house yourself. You can't do a crappy job on your house and have it fall over. So you had to take some time. So that was one lesson that I learned right away was, like, craftsmanship is really important to a job. Second thing I learned was try anything. So when I was in school, I had a professor. I was just first semester into school, and she's like, you need to help me out. I need, you know, a minion to do some stuff. I was like, okay, I don't know what I'm doing, but sounds good. So she wanted me to drill acrylic balls um, with rods and make this kind of giant sculpture that was going to be hanging in the Wisconsin Crime Lab. I was like, okay, that sounds good. So I learned this cool skill that I never, you know, if I've never drilled into, you know, bowling ball sizes of, a, of acrylic balls to hang in a crime lab. So I got security clearances. I got to go in there. It was a wicked cool experience. Um, so whenever you have the opportunity, if anybody asks you and you're totally green, you have to at least try it, right? Otherwise, you'll never know how you do. Um, but, caveat, um, but be willing to admit defeat. So senior, uh, super senior year in college, I was totally burnt. Uh, obviously, five years in college takes a lot out of you. Um, I decided to work in the, the relief studio, uh, supplying the studio with inks, what have you, clean up afterwards. I didn't want to do anything. Um, I was a jerk. And I should have just been like, nope, I shouldn't be doing this. But instead, I stuck it on, and the teacher was totally pissed at me. So knowing that like, you can't do everything, and if you can't do it, you should at least say it and totally you know, profess truth instead of pretend that you're really good at what you do. Um, so don't be afraid to walk away from something. Um, don't be ashamed. It's, it's cool. It happens to us all. And you have potential. Um, I've had many jobs, and one of them was selling stuffed lobsters and baked beans. Um, totally glamorous job, really fun at a souvenir shop. So I, you know, sold some funny shit to a bunch of people. 
sorry. Um, <laughs> so I worked with a bunch of people, uh, you know, all race, all color, all age, um, and they thought this was the end-all, be-all of jobs, which is really disappointing because they're really, really cool people, and they've never seen anything past, you know, a retail shop job, which is unfortunate because there's so many cool opportunities out there. So you might, I mean, cool if you like retail and that's your thing and that's what you want to do and you're really passionate about it, stick. But if that's what you think is all your potential and you never expand further than that, then you got to expand your horizons a little bit. Try some new stuff. Go to YWeb. Learn some stuff. Um, yes. Uh, like like people before me, like Dawn, um, I, I've had many jobs and one of them was working for a union um, where they think that instead of helping build anything that I should be in wardrobe and do makeup. Uh, I didn't know how to do either of those things because um, I knew how to do tools. I knew how to build things. So instead of, you know, I have chest hair, which I do not. Um, I could do anything that the guys could do. Um, and that was, it was really hard to, to get that through their mind that like, I can build a trust that, you know, flung Kenny Chesney over their head. Like I, I, I can do that. I don't have to push a box around. Like I know how to work with tools. So don't let anybody tell you you can't do anything depending on your gender because it's total bullshit. Um, you can do it. Um, always have a laugh. Uh, jobs are stressful sometimes. And if you don't have the opportunity to laugh, it makes it worse. I worked for a theater where nobody was communicating because everybody was stressed out and the boss didn't know how to talk to people. Who knew that Tenacious D would bring them all together, right? Yes. Um, good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good fart jokes and whatnot uh, can make stress go away real fast. So always have a laugh. Um, make sure that everybody has some sort of stress relief in a job just because it just makes the environment way easier. Um, but <laughs> caveat, uh, don't get carried away um, because uh, crap happens that shouldn't happen. Uh, I worked at a photography studio and it was one of those like, you know, dance moms where they want all the glittery outfits and the pictures of all the glittery outfits and their troops. I did about 30 data entry points on one of those things and by that time I was running out of names for these groups, you know, ladybugs, soccer. I ended up putting stupid dance group that got printed on everybody's envelope and got sent out to the family. It was a <laughs> proud moment. Um, <laughs> so it was one of those moments where you have to like be like, I, I screwed up. I didn't get fired. Um, I should have, but I didn't. Uh, they trusted that I won't do it again. So it's a cool if you screw up and you admit to it. Don't write stupid dance group on a bunch of dance moms envelopes. Uh, nothing good can happen out of that. Uh, no free labor. Please, like, if you go for internships um, and they say non-paid, don't do it. Uh, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> Unless it's your mom <laughs> or nonprofits that you're passionate about, um, like YWeb. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd do anything to help you guys out. Uh, let me know. Um, I think it's noble causes that really like make it all worth it. No matter, you know, there is no salary that that can feel happiness, right? Um, so don't take free free internships as bullshit. Um, they should pay for you. You're valuable. Like your your skills, what you're giving them is valuable. So you should be paid accordingly. Um, so whenever you guys leave, you know, the Y Web, and they're like, well, you can come on for a free internship. You can learn some stuff. It's bullshit. Um, appreciate the feet you stand on. Uh, I, I work for a big corporation and I unfortunately felt like I was just a number. Um, I was not a name, I was not a person. Uh, so it was very treacherous to get up that corporate ladder. Like if you piss people off, you know, like death, uh, you didn't make it very far up that ladder because they, they, they super weren't into, you know, helping each other out. They were very much for themselves. So be aware of those things. Um, and if you own a company and you don't appreciate the people underneath you, that's wrong. Like these are the people that, that are making you money, the people that are helping you out. So 
be wary. Um, also be positive at all times if you're a boss or a minion. I found that having to filter in negativity to like a client, I worked at a theater where I would have my bosses spew, you know, hateful crap in one ear, and I would have to, you know, recite kitties and puppies and rainbows in the same conversation, headphone out. So it's always good to be positive, and not only do like positivity is a good thing, but also people follow you if you're you're a good person, you're a happy person, you, so you can lead with positivity. Um, stand up for yourself. Uh, only you have your voice. Um, only you can speak for yourself unless you have some rad people behind you, but generally, like, you should look out for yourself. Uh, I worked for fashion, uh, fashion runway shows. Models are weird looking, just saying. In person, they, they their proportions are off. Um, so I had a boss that uh, would leverage all of my skills and take all the money, and I would do paintings for her, and she gave me a haircut. That's what I got paid for, with a haircut. Um, sometimes you have to do the tough stuff. I worked for uh, a movie in the Disney Studios uh, and when I lived in Boston, and I was at the bottom of the totem pole. So that means I got to do other really rad jobs like sanding and priming and sitting in a corner um, where everybody else uh, did really cool stuff. My sister got to go on, you know, on site and work with the actors, like, but she worked up to that, so it took a really long time. So while I'm sanding, um, your foreman's on his telephone watching you with a hairy eyeball looking to fire you. So you got to be careful what you do at those types of jobs. But if you work hard enough, you can get up to like working in the new Ghostbuster movie. Yeah, that's what my sister's going to be doing. Jerk. Um, yeah. Um, and when you pay your dues, you know, after doing, you know, doing the time, you can't expect everything to come to you right away. Um, so when you do pay your dues, you know, all of a sudden you've got that foundation, you've got that skill that you can back it up, and then your opinion becomes really important. Your opinion matters. And if you find a job that actually values that, that's amazing. So when you find what you're really good at, um, and, and the people that you work for really appreciate it, I think that's the happiest ending that you can have. Um, so thanks.